Hi folks, Larry here, Vans Cars and Trucks. Another session here and hope you've had some entertainment with us in the past. And we're going to do a little different today because uh, today's topic came in via a customer, but he doesn't know that he was actually hitting a hot topic for me. And that was uh, amongst the other discussions that he says, he says, and he wasn't being smart alecky when he said it, but he was kind of curious. He says, I guess your down payment on these cars is about what you paid for them, wasn't it? And I didn't laugh at him, but I did laugh inwardly because I've heard that topic for, oh, so many years. And, and he has no real knowledge of it, so I couldn't fault him at all. But I had to look back and think to myself, Larry, wouldn't that be wonderful? Because it never happened in the 30 years that I'm aware of. Now, I've heard prior where you could actually go out and buy a $500 car for auction and actually bring it back to the lot, put air in the tires, and, and dust it off with a vacuum cleaner and sell it for $500 down. So maybe that was the case at some point in time, but certainly not in my lifetime, my experience in the car business. Uh, and I wanted to share with you a little bit of information because uh, we've been doing this for a number of years, and we do have some pretty good metrics and a handle on the numbers of what we do do. And there's three types of transactions, by the way, for business like ours. We get folks that write a check or pay cash. We call that a cash deal. It doesn't have to be greenbacks, but the idea is it's paid for when it leaves. Uh, second type of transaction is a finance tra transaction. That means the customer has their own financing underway, which is great. Bank loan, credit union, great interest rate for those qualified customers. They've already got a handle on it. They don't want us to do that. Fantastic. That's the second. Third transaction, which we've evolved to since the recession, which is a buy here, pay here. Some people call it in-house financing or tote the note. But you got the idea. You put so much money down, you pay so much a week, a month, or bi-weekly, whatever the payment deal is. Really, that's where we have learned the process. We, do, we knew zero at the get-go, by the way. I did not know anything about that part of the business. I had to learn. I learned the hard way. But I've got some ideas here for you that give you some real numbers for this last year because we never get the down payment. That's so rare. In fact, we call it how far can, do we have to be underwater on each deal to see, just to see our head above that water point. Um, last year, we sold about 264 vehicles on that kind of a program. Kind of average year for us, not up or down. But out of that 264, our average cost is $3,006. Now, imagine that's an average number because out of that 264, we probably had some that we bought for $1,500 or came in on trade, we revitalized. We would spend more money on repairs on those lesser cars, and if we bought one for 8000 spent less on repairs. But no matter what, we, that was the average cost. Now, I mentioned repairs. It used to be years ago, you didn't have to do much. It came in pretty good shape. You chose a good car, you put it back on the lot, and you didn't need many things. Today, that's not the case. We spend $2,008 on repairs on our average, cost, our average vehicle. I go, I have to take a deep breath because that's a lot of money. Uh, just this week, we spent, we, we put three sets of tires on cars just a matter of days. Uh, we spend buku amount of money just on tires, and, and we do a lot of in-house. We have two full-time mechanics. We also have so much we have to vendor out some of those mechanical jobs, so those get paid as outside. But the labor that we do inside doesn't even get calculated on here because that's on payroll. But there is your two major costs on that vehicle. The cost of the goods, which is the vehicle when it comes in, bid, sale, auction, however it came through the, the the grapevine, it got here. Then we went ahead and addressed repairs to make it presentable. Uh, 5000 some odd dollars. How much did we sell that average car for when it was all said and done? And don't forget, those two numbers don't take into consideration things like detail, like, like fixing the car, uh, getting the car for transport. All those items doesn't take paying payroll or anything else. But we sold that car for $8,200. That was our average sale price. Don't forget, that's an average. Some cars we sold for $29.95, other cars we sold for twelve, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen thousand dollars. But that was the average number. And how much down did we get on that average car that we had average cost on? Here's the surprise. Fifteen hundred and five dollars. Wow. Now how much did that actually cover? Oh, oh, by the way, we still had to pay when the transaction with the state of Florida, tax, tag, and title. You need a new tag in the state of Florida, four hundred twenty dollars. Average sales tax was five hundred dollars. And title work, seventy-two fifty. Add those numbers up. I don't have to do it for you. The break-even point is so far down the road. It's silly. We hope the car makes it. We really do. We hope 
that the customer makes it, we really do. We hope they don't run off to Michigan with our great car that we just spent money on to make it all work because it takes us on the average of $273 just to break even. So how would you like to sit there and be in business, realize you're going to wait nine months to break even on a transaction? So I have to laugh when I hear the customer say the down payment covers the cost of the car. Anyways, first urban legend. I've got some more for you. I'm only going to hit a couple of highlights because I've got like eight or ten of these things. But the second one is miss one car payment, they're going to repo that car. Well, guess what? Getting the car out there and letting you use it is one thing. We do need to have it paid for. But the last thing we need is that car back. Because guess what? We're so far underwater. We need that car to work and we need that customer to pay for that car. So we do not want to repossess that car. We'll make the phone calls if they can't. But yes, payments have to be made. We understand that too well. Uh, another urban legend is, I almost got it paid for and they came and got my car. I can't even imagine. I'm sure it happened to somebody. I mean, you know, urban legends, there's a little kernel of truth in there somewhere. But the reality of it is, if you've almost got that car paid for, three years, two years later, it's probably not as good a car that it was when you bought it. Probably has a few more miles or a lot more miles. Tires probably aren't brand new like when we put them on. So anyways, we want you back for another car. We don't want that car to be repoed because it's, it's just going to be a, more money to spend. We want you back. We want the customer back. We want to put a new vehicle. If that's a good customer, last thing we want is to repo that vehicle. Just the repo cost alone, three to $500. Why would we want to do that? But I'm sure that somebody had it happen or some story was close to that. So there's always a little kernel of wisdom in there, a little bit of truth in every story. But this is from my perspective, admittedly. I'm prejudiced. I'm sitting on this side of the desk. But I can tell you these are the facts. These are the numbers. I hope you enjoyed some of the story because I've got several more urban legends for you and they're even more fun.